I'm going to show you my version of one of my favorite all-time tricks. It looks like this. Two rubber bands get linked together, and somehow, they mysteriously and visually unlink. It's a classic trick called the crazy man's handcuffs, but I think there's one flaw. And that flaw is that there's always a secret move that has to happen. So I found a way to do the secret move invisibly. When you get really good at it, you can actually take it one step further. If I link the bands back up, watch, strand by strand, they unlink just like this. Let's go and learn how to do my version of the crazy man's handcuffs. Ooh, welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. My name's Lloyd. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you, ah, it's a bit of a, a, a love-hate thing. I'm gonna share with you the number one trick that I've performed at all magic conventions around the world for the past 10 years. I'm a bit sad to let it go because more people will now know how this works before I show it to them. And before we get into anything else, you, no, not you, you legend, you're a legend, no, not you, you legend, you, smarty pants who's just about to comment, didn't fool me, won't fool anyone, we get it. You're so intelligent. Um, everyone around you bows down to your intelligence. Thank you for letting us know how smart you are. And thank you for telling us you weren't fooled. We really appreciate it. It was very important for us to realize how smart you are. Hey, hey, come and look how smart he is. He, he's, he said he, he said he wasn't fooled. <laughs> but I'm just kidding. On camera, especially when you get to watch this like in HD, uh, it's gonna not fool some of you. But there's a reason, and I say it in all honesty, there's a reason why I've been doing this for a decade around the world, uh, only to magicians, but there's a reason why I've been doing this for so long, it's because it works. I love that feeling of showing them Crazy Man's, the original, and then lulling them into a false sense of security, showing them my version straight after it, and then watching their eyes just bulge out of their skull. And then I love even more showing them the method where they go, oh my, is that it? It's one of those fun things to do. I only do it on magicians because I'm gonna use their own knowledge against them to fool them. And when it comes to a lay audience, I actually never do Crazy Man's handcuffs in my own hand. So for anyone that doesn't know Crazy Man's, I'm pretty confident everyone watching this video knows Crazy Man's handcuffs. I'll very quickly explain that to you. Then I'll show you my two handlings, the updates to it or the new methods to it and I'll even throw in a little bonus thing that I sometimes like to do. So let's dive straight into the video and learn how to do this effect. By the way, if you wanna win a pack of the exact rubber bands that I use, about 50 of them in a pack, then all you need to do is comment something down below and make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll pick a winner at random by next week and fly them out to you wherever you are in the world. Grab yourself two identically coloured rubber bands. I use latex free size 19 Alliance brand rubber bands. I have a link to a UK Amazon store in the description. Anywhere else you'll need to find them local to you online. So for anyone that doesn't know the crazy man's handcuffs moves, I'm assuming everyone's magicians watching this channel so I'll very basically cover it. The original effect, crazy man's handcuffs, looks just like this or works just like this. In essence, the bands are linked. As you go to prove that they're linked, watch the tip of my index finger right here. As my middle finger traps the band, I come out and it, it's gonna go into this strand here, okay? So it comes out of this top loop and into this bottom loop and it's unlinked. I know it's a bit crazy to watch, hence the name. Comes out of the top loop and into that thumb loop and then I immediately straighten out and that gives you the effect of it magically unlinking, okay? At speed, it looks just like that. Now, the important thing about this is when you set up the link, you do it in this way. You put your hand towards yourself, you tilt down, and you link it as you normally would, right? Then perform the effect because that's gonna condition your audience for how the second phase works, the addition that I've added to this. So that looks like this. Place it through and now you can make that band and link. Right before we get into the fun stuff, uh, just a real quick news announcement. I actually waited until we got to 100 requests uh, and that day has come. I have the Society of Secrets over on Patreon as my membership. You can go and see the video linked on screen to hear all about it. 
a lot of you didn't want to go through Patreon, you wanted to do it through YouTube memberships. So all I've done is I put everything that's on the, the Society of Secrets on Patreon, also now onto YouTube. They'll both be updated at the same time with all the upcoming content. If you sign up to the YouTube members, you get the same benefits such as the exclusive Discord, the live group chats and everything like that. So for those of you that, that over the hundred of you that don't wanna go through Patreon and you want to remain on YouTube, you can go and check out the membership section on my page, on my channel, and you can find out all about it there. But uh, yeah, thanks for the requests. Your wish is my command. Let's go and learn the good stuff. The way that works is because of conditioning. So because they've seen this image, they just assume I'm doing it again. The reality is, my thumb comes out of the way for actually no reason at all, but just to make the image look identical. My thumb comes out of the way with my hand tilted back. I pretend to link like that. And as soon as, as soon as my thumb goes back in, as if it's linked over, I start to move. Okay. That's really it. But because they've seen this image once, they relax. They just think the same image is going to happen again. The second time it goes through but it actually doesn't because I'm doing this. All right, and it's really angle friendly. I do this everywhere all the time. Just maybe don't have people behind you. There's actually a little bonus I didn't show, which looks like this. You can place the, the band through, so you can see it's linked. And in slow motion, it'll just come through one strand. See how it's like just through one strand? And then if you want to finish it off, it comes all the way through. And that little bonus works like this. I'm going to place this band, this one, between these two bands. So it's like a, it's a bit of a combination of both methods. So I tilt back, okay? So the audience see the same image as they did before. I pass this through the center of these two bands. Now, when I do this move, especially for magicians, they see it just go through one band. You get like a kind of a whoa moment because they really don't expect this. And because they're so like, they, they, they relax just for a moment, you can actually, it's really well motivated to do the original Crazy Man's move again. So finger coming out and going in. And now that you finish it off like that. All right, this is the last version. And this is a little bit more tricky to do in the real world. You just have to have a bit more cover and I'll explain how easy that is to do. This time it's gonna go strand by, oh, let me do this so you get, get the view. It's gonna go strand by strand like that. You can see it comes all the way through. Now the way that works is from above, my thumb comes out of the way, just like I would normally do it, but instead it's gonna go behind my thumb, <laughs> okay? Now on camera, I can use two fingers for cover. In the real world, I'm gonna tilt back a little bit more and use these fingers, all right? So it's a lot more cover, but just to make it look pretty for the camera, I can use less fingers because I kind of know where I am. Again, behind the thumb, and now you might think this is too far of a distance. So what I do is push against the thumb, okay? Like that. And that allows me to trap one strand of the band to give you that illusion of just one band coming through. Then I can just release my thumb and the second band will pop off just like that. And now instead of, if you look at it, I'm kind of far behind. So instead of just turning my hand like that and sort of revealing that I'm way off, off uh, center, I'm not aligned, I sort of bring my hand back and around this band here, okay? So I'm here, comes through. I show that, which makes it feel like this was always in the middle, especially tilted back like this. I just show the band that it's to, as if to say it's still linked on my fingers. And now I come and just touch them together to condition, to, to sort of finish the, the conditioning that it was centered the entire time. And that's the effect from start to finish. It looks like this. It's trapped for real. And that's the crazy man's move. Now I'm not going to do the crazy man's move. If you want to throw a bonus in there, say watch closely this time. Look, it just comes through one of the strands. See, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Watch like this. And to finish it off, you say watch. We'll do strand by strand all the way out. Just like that. And they're unlinked. That's the LB version of the crazy man's handcuffs. Trivia time. Who knows the answer to who created the crazy man's handcuffs? I'll give you less than a second to answer because I have it right here. Um, just as a bit of research, a bit of interest and information for you all, uh, on, the con on conjuringcredits.com, 
it says this about the history of the crazy man's handcuffs. It says it was invented by Arthur Setterington, who published it as Getaway in the May 1970 issue of Peter Warlock's New Pentagram, Volume 2, Number 3, Page 22. It was refined by Herb Zaro and published as the uncanny penetrating rubber bands in Tarbell uh, in, in Volume 7 in 1972, page 214, but without credit. And then in 1989, Michael Amar published it in a manuscript using its now popular name, which was supplied by Daryl. Uh, rest in peace, Daryl. So, not many people know the history on the crazy man's handcuffs, and it wasn't until I researched it a while back and that I found out. But I thought that was pretty interesting to know. Remember, if you want to win 50 of my very own uh, latex-free size 19 orange rubber bands, then just make sure you hit that subscribe button and comment something down below. Like I said earlier, now the Society of Secrets is completely available on YouTube as well, so you can go and sign up through the membership section. I don't think any of you will be disappointed, and it's only the best of the best material that goes on there, the stuff that will never be shared. And if you like this rubber band tutorial, then be sure to check out this one right here, because it's super visual and it, and it melts slowly through a playing card, very easy to do, and go and check out this crazy Lincoln rubber band tutorial that was taught to me by my friend Rory Adams. I think you'll get a kick out of that at the same time. But until next time, folks, I will see you very, very soon. Peace.